Amen. Um, so James is telling us in the first section of this chapter that um, we are going to have trials. There's going to be hard times that come our way. But the whole theme of James is faith at work. This is how faith works. This is how it's developed, and this is how it's put into practice. And, and it's a, and a, a great diagnostic uh, book of where we stand. Um, and as we go through it, it'll really challenge us in, in our walk with the Lord. If we're not progressing, we're not neutral. We're not just good. We're falling back. And so it's always, this Christian life is never idle. It's always moving forward. It's always growing. It's always growing in dependency of him, growing in not our own strength, but in recognizing his strength. So it'll be a challenge um, facing, if it's important to you, if the Christian walk is important to you, it'll be a challenge going through this because it's going to be challenging us. It's going to be asking more of us. Even if you're the greatest Christian in the world, the greatest Christian in the world would never admit to that, but it's still progressing. It's still asking more. It's never done. Not until, not until Jesus comes. Uh, so let's read in James chapter 1, verses 9 through 18. Let the lowly brother boast in his exaltation and the rich in his humiliation, because like a flower of the grass, he will pass away. For the sun rises with its scorching heat and withers the grass. Its flower falls and its beauty perishes. So also will the rich man fade away in the midst of his pursuits. Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. For when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then desire, when it, is, it has conceived, gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. Every good gift, every perfect gift is from above. Coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creation. Lord, we come before you this morning thankful for your grace and your mercy, Lord, your love toward us. The great work that you accomplished at the cross on our behalf, we could never repay. And so we ask, Lord, that you would give us courage, that you would give us discernment on how to move forward, how, what kind of actions we should take how we should live to impact this community, how we should live to make disciples, all for your honor and for your glory, Lord. We thank you, God. Be with us this morning. Give us discernment. And then the courage to change, to allow you and submit to you to change and to mold. In Jesus' name, amen. Let the lowly brother boast in his exaltation and the rich in his humiliation because a flower of the grass, he will pass away. Like the flower, like a flower of the grass, he will pass away. 
basically what James is talking about is you're not as bad as you think you are and you're not as great as you think you are. Especially for those that are a part of the family of God. You might have gone through some difficult things in your life or you might have done some horrible things in your life. But there is redemption for everyone that believes. And there are some hard cases, but nothing is impossible for God. Let the lowly brother boast in his exaltation given by God. You don't go from, oh, I am nothing to I am great. No, you go from that position lowly to he is great. And the rich in his humiliation, because like a flower of the grass, he will pass away. You might think, well, I'm not rich. If you're having lunch today, you're rich. If you drive a car, you are rich. If you got some change in your pocket, a roof over your head, you're rich. Well, I'm not as rich as that one dude over there. Man, you should see what... We are the exception. The majority of the world a good percentage of the people out there, they don't know where their next meal is coming from. So this is speaking to us, to all of us. Don't depend on your material gain. Depend on him. Don't boast about what you have. Don't take comfort in what you have. Don't strive for more of the same. Strive to honor him. To bring him glory. Boast in that. That I am nothing if it's not for God. And his grace on my life. Boast in that. Always in him. Never in us. When attention comes our way, we divert that and we say, praise him. For the sun rises with its scorching heat and withers the grass. There's a parable um, where Jesus is telling his disciples and his followers about um, a rich man that has property, he's got land, he's got storehouses full of grain, he's got a good year. And he's got so much grain that year that he's like, you know what, I'm going to tear those storehouses down and build bigger ones and then I can just kick back, you know, on my lazy boy and I'm good to go, man, for the rest of my life. Easy life. And he says, you fool. You fool. You don't even have tonight. Let us be caught in doing the work that we ought to be doing. We shouldn't preoccupy ourselves when, and Jesus said this, with when he will come. There is prophecy, and we can study it. We can go through it. But Jesus says, for not even the Son of Man knows. The Father knows. You need to be concerned with doing the work that I've assigned for you to do. And so we need to be careful with where our treasure is very careful with where we invest our time and our resources and not depend on our resources. 
but to depend on him. We have been blessed. We have been given much. Why do you think that is? So that we can give much. So that we can bless others. Not stash it under the mattress. Not that anybody does that anymore, but you, you get what I'm saying? Don't build bigger storehouses. Invest in the kingdom of God. Because, just like the grass and the flower, it's all going to go away. All of that effort to build your own little kingdom, it's all going to go away. For the sun rises with its scorching heat and withers the grass. Its flower falls and its beauty perishes. So also the rich man fade away in the midst of his pursuits. Blessed is a man who remains steadfast under trial. For when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life which God has promised to those who love him. You might think, well, I, I love him. I believe in Jesus. Is it shaping your life? Because it's not, I'm a broken record up here, I know this. It's not just the claim. It's not just saying I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. It's not just saying I'm a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Anybody can say that. Does your life say it? Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. Keep on keeping on. We keep on working. No matter what comes our way, whatever trial, whatever problem, we keep going forward for his glory, for the kingdom. We keep going forward. For when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life. When we go before him, we will be rewarded. Let's not preoccupy ourselves with being recognized here. There he will recognize us. And everything else that we've ever wanted will fade in comparison to his recognition. For when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him, who live for him, who have surrendered to him. Let no one say, when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. Have you ever heard that before? Lord, why? <laughs> Let no one say, when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted with evil. He has nothing to do with evil. There is a broken world that we live in. Right? And we are broken ourselves. And that's what James is about to say. And he himself tempts no one, but each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. There are some pretty awesome things out there with a hook on it, beautiful, shining, awesome things that lure us. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. I have seen the problem with the world and it is me.
But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin. First, it's a thought. Oh, man, I'd like to have that. Then, when conceived, gives birth to sin. Actually going through with it. It's not just a thought anymore. And sin, what in its fully grown, brings forth death. I don't know a lot about fishing. And if you invite me to go fishing with you, Dennis... You're going to find out pretty quickly. That dude knows nothing. But it's some trickery, right? We make it beautiful and awesome for that fish. We cast out in the right spot, right? At the right time. It, everything has to work. You know, you can't go out fishing when there's a bunch of kids splashing around. I, I know that. But it's the right time, the right kind of fish, the right kind of lure, and then you're caught. What's going to happen? If you're a sportsman and you're a catch and release, I don't know you, but I like to eat fish. So it can fall apart, right? The illustration can fall apart. But you understand where I'm going. If that fish is caught, what is next for that fish? Death. And so it is with us. It's a thought. There's an opportunity. Conceived. You go through with it. Then death. So we must be steadfast, sober-minded. Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. Every good gift, every perfect gift is from above. God does not have anything to do with that evil that is tempting you. It's the brokenness inside that desire inside that he is trying to mold and shape and yank out of you. But every good gift, every perfect gift is from above, from the Father of lights. You got family, you got kids, it's a gift from the Father of lights. We've got air conditioning in this place it's a gift from the Father of light. We got to witness someone joining our family. It's a gift from the Father of light. This sermon, this scripture today is a gift from the Father of light. It's another opportunity. It's another second chance. Mathematically, chances don't, second chances don't add up when it comes to God. You get a bunch of second chances. So long as you're breathing, so long as the gospel is being proclaimed and you have to make that commitment with the Lord, there's another second chance. He is not done with you. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. We've been given much, man. And there is a whole community of people that need to hear about the Father of Light. About the Father that gives every good and perfect gift. Mainly, our security in him. That 
is huge. That is so huge. With whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. There's no variation in him. He is always and forever will be the same God. Yesterday, today, and forever, always the same God. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth. He orchestrated that opportunity for you to hear truth, for you to hear the gospel already working in you, priming you to get you ready to hear truth so that you may be transformed. Of his own will, he brought forth by the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creation. Of his creatures. We are living witnesses of the Father of light. If we think that he is so great, We should not be able to keep quiet about how great he is. We sing lots of songs that talk about his greatness. But our voices, no matter how loud, don't go past these walls. We ourselves need to take the gospel outside these walls and proclaim how great he is. This is how faith works. How it works in us. How it develops. How we continue to mature. And how we put it into practice. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 11 through 13. Now these things happened to them as an example, but they were written down for our instruction on whom the end of the ages has come. Therefore, let anyone who thinks that he stands take heed lest he fall. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. Again, we, we think we are the exception that things happen to us that's never happened to anyone else before. There is nothing new under the sun. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability, but with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it always provides a way out. I always get in trouble when I hang out with my friends. Well, don't hang out with your friends. There is always a way out. Man, I can't get on the computer because then those things pop up. Well, don't get on the computer. Whatever temptation, whatever struggle you have in your life, there is always a way out. Do we silence it? Do we walk away? Or do we jump in? It would be tough to live this life without the Holy Spirit abiding and guiding you can't do it on your own. You can't fight sin on your own. You can't muster up enough strength to get through the week. You can't get enough strength to walk out for the next hour without sinning. That's hard to hear, isn't it? It's only by His Holy Spirit. And that's why we submit. That's why James and Peter 
are screaming out to us, surrender completely to him. And as a pastor, why I preach these kind of sermons. As a shepherd, surrender completely, no reservations. Buy into his good and perfect plan and let go of your own agenda, of your own your own way. If you have not made a commitment to follow the Lord, today there's an opportunity. We have a new member to our family today. We can have another baptism. We can have... Man, that, that is such a joy to take part in that. Father of Lights has given us this good and perfect gift today that we may be witnesses to that. Sometimes I think that special events like that have happened and we've been witnesses long enough that it just can you know, kind of become common. It is not. It is a big deal. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for your good and perfect gifts and how you develop our faith, Lord, and how you put it to the test and continue to grow and shape us and mold us, God. That you don't leave us alone to figure this thing out for ourselves, but you've given us your Holy Spirit to guide us that we may be disciplined and held accountable and encouraged and press on we love you, Lord. Thank you for the developing this steadfastness within us. You're such a gracious God.